Welcome to Columbia Theatre Berlin, where I have Carl from Nile with me. How you doing? Uh, for starters, uh, how is Nile Circa 2018 doing and how does the year look for you guys? Uh, things are really good for us. We've been really happy this past year. Um, we've been touring our butts off and we have a new album in the works that we're really excited about. Uh, so 2018, it's going to be our year. Okay, uh, today in Berlin is the last leg of your European tour. Uh, so how has the tour been for you guys? It's been a really good tour. Uh, we have Terrorizer and Exorcist. Uh, and what a great bunch of guys. Uh, I think this is one of the chillest tours uh, I've been on in years. Okay, and uh, unfair question, but what have been the best gigs on the tour? <laughs> what is the best gigs? Well, you know, like, London's always good, Berlin's always good, Paris is always good. We didn't go to Paris this time. We took a day off. Um, we didn't go to Paris. Um, uh, Budapest was pretty fucking good. Yeah. And uh, you are continuing on an American tour next month? With Soulfly. Yeah, that's going to be fun. Yeah. yeah. So how important is touring for you? Well, touring, it's, you know, it's the, uh, it's the lifeblood of any band. Uh, you must play your music for the people. Uh, that's its purpose. Uh, so, yeah, if you have no touring, then I don't think you can really call it a band. I think you must have the band, the music, and the people. Okay, uh, you already uh, told me that uh, there's a new album coming up. Your last album, Things That Should Not Be Unearthed, came out in 2015. So uh, what kind of music are we going to hear on that new album? Well, it's going to be Nile music, you know. And we're Nile. We're uh, definitely continuing on in the same vein. Although, you know, we have a new member, so uh, he's bringing some new influences to the table. But, you know, it still sounds like Nile. Um, there's no radical departure. Okay, uh, there's been, like you said, that there's, uh, uh, again, a new uh, change in the lineup. There's been a bunch over the years. So what would you say is the essence of Nile that always prevails? The you music. know, it's, it's you, of course, but uh, <laughs> what else? Yeah, you know, it, it's the music. Uh, I believe it's the music and the connection with the fans. That is... Uh, the persevering eternal essence. Uh, your lyrics, uh, they deal a lot with the Egyptian mythology, among other things, of course. Uh, but what have those uh, fascinations with those things brought you personally, uh, other than, uh, you know, inspiration for Nile's music, of course? Well, it was... Uh a lot of fun when I started researching the lyrics for Nile. Uh, I thought to do a really good job with it, you know, it needed to be done right. So there was a lot of research involved. Um, and the more that I learned, the more I studied, uh, the more I enjoyed it. Uh, I really look forward to the times when I'm working on Nile songs because uh, it's very enriching, very rewarding. Uh, yeah. Um... You've been doing this for a long time. So uh, what are the most memorable moments on the Niles career for you? Uh, I'd have to say Vakin in 03. Uh, we played right before Slayer. And it was, you know, a, a prime spot. Had the, you know, a great crowd. Um, that was a great one. Um, yeah. Uh, taking uh, the new guitarist out on tour. That was very rewarding because um, you got to kind of see things through his young, inexperienced eyes and uh, makes you appreciate it in a much different way. Uh, so, uh, you know, the journey has been long. So uh, what things have changed over the years from the first demo to, you know, Berlin today? Record-wise and, you know, live-wise, of course. Well, you know... Uh, 
the entire metal scene has changed completely. It's, it's not the same thing. Uh, when we started, there was no internet. Um, <laughs> uh, and now, you know, the internet is like, you know, it's how we do everything in the modern age. Um, but also, uh, touring has gotten better because venues uh, have caught up. Uh, the places we play nowadays are are much better than the ones when we started. You know, that's a natural progression, but, you know, and certainly the financial rewards are different when you've been playing in a band for 20 years as opposed to just starting out. Um, it's easier to collect our money now. <laughs> when you're a young band, you know, you you may supposed to be get paid, but actually collecting your money at the end of the night is a different matter, you know. It's tough on young bands. Uh, your music is very technical. Your death metal is very technical. Um, is there a limit till uh, where you would go, or how uh, how do you see you know uh, technical death metal progressing nowadays? Well, you know, from the difference from when I started to now, bands are so ridiculously technical now. Even infants today can play as fast as the earliest Mahavishnas. Uh, like, you got nine-year-old Japanese girls that can fucking shred Paul Gilbert, right? I mean, come on, that's a lifelong accomplishment for any guitarist. And now, literally, nine-year-old kids from Japan and Korea can shred like motherfuckers. What does that mean to the rest of the world? I don't know. I think it, it comes down to it's not just about technique. You've got to make some music, too. You know? Yeah. There you go. Yeah, I guess you have to have some soul in it, too. That's just the, I think you know. the soul, the feeling, that's what touches people. Because you know, people who can shred drums, high, fast technical music, fast guitars... You know, they're they're more commonplace nowadays. It's less meaningful. It's less special. So I think you really have to actually have something that connects with people to, you know, to be heard, for people to even care. Because literally, you can just click on something else. If you don't like what you're hearing, it takes a nanosecond to click on something else. And fuck whatever it was you were listening to. Okay, and... Uh... For the last uh, very easy question, so uh, what are your feelings? So, because it's been uh, such a long road, or what are your feelings on your own career? Uh, it's you know Nile has been amazingly successful, and uh, you know from the from the starters from the day, what are your feelings? Uh, well, you know I I'm happy uh, when people say, "Wow, it's it's like the 20th year anniversary of Nefren Ka," and I go, "Motherfucker, I've been touring for 20 years." Where all the time go? And then I realized I spent it playing metal for metal fans. Is there anything better? Probably not. So would you say that uh, it was your dream to do this for a living and now you accomplished that? Yeah, I, I mean, when you say for a living, it is what I do for a living. The living of a death metal guitar player is not the same living you know, as, say, Michael Jackson. It's not the same thing. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, there is a happiness level. You know, when you're playing your own music, uh, and it's brutal, uncompromising music, no one can tell us what the fuck to do. We're doing what we want to do. There's a certain brutal joy in that. And uh, over the years, with uh, you know everything you've done, uh, you never had to compromise that. Well, you know, sometimes you got to compromise with your own bandmates. But <laughs> other than that, you know, death metal is a, a no compromise kind of music. You know, if you you tell anybody in any death metal band, you got to do it this way, it is guaranteed they're gonna say, "Fuck you, go fuck yourself." 
we're doing it our way. Okay, thank you so much, and uh, break a leg tonight. Uh, thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Thank you.